Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. I'm David Hooper. Bigpodcast.com is the company. And this is the podcast where I talk about growing your audience, getting more people to your show, making a show people care about, making it compelling, making it something people want to share, making a show that builds your authority, makes you money, and gets you the results for your business or for yourself that you need. This is part two of a series that I am doing about podcast turnoffs. This was a thread started by Podchaser. They asked, what turns you off from a podcast? They got a lot of responses. I'm taking them one by one as they come. If you have not heard the first part of this episode, let me tell you how to get it. The best way to do it is to subscribe to the podcast. That way you never miss an episode. It's bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've got a button for iPhone, one for Android, an RSS feed if you want that, and also a QR code that you can scan. Get out your phone, point your camera at it, puts the podcast right in your phone. You can take me anywhere. Take me in your car, take me to the gym. And speaking of turnoffs, one of the biggest podcast turnoffs for people is when you're in your car listening to a podcast, you got to ride the volume, meaning you've got one speaker that's loud or you've got elements that are loud and you've got one that's quiet and you can't hear them. You got to turn it up for that. And then something else comes in that's loud you can see how that would be annoying. You got to get your levels in order. This episode is brought to you by Riverside.fm. Riverside is the leading platform to record studio quality, remote podcast and video. And one of the things that they have built into the system, it's what they call the magic editor. You can save hours of editing time with just a few clicks. Beyond that though, it's the first rule of good recording. Riverside is going to make sure that your initial recording sounds amazing because you need to have a good recording to get a good edit. Over 70,000 people and companies agree. People like Guy Raz, companies like Spotify, the New York Times. If you want to check it out, you can do it right now. Go to riverside.fm. There's a free trial for you. They'll give you enough time to get an interview or two. You can do audio. You can do video. Whatever you want. They've got it at riverside.fm. It's a free trial. Check it out. And if you decide to stick around, let me give you a code. This is going to get you a 15% discount whether you stay for a month or whether you stay for life. 15% off for as long as you stick with Riverside. The code is Big Podcast, B I G P O D C A S T, Big Podcast, one word, Riverside.fm. That code, Big Podcast, B I G P O D C A S T. All right, let's talk about some turnoffs. Podchaser, by the way, if you're not familiar with this company, it's like IMDb, all music, but for podcasting. Every industry has one of these. You look up a specific project, you see who played on it, who produced it who was part of it, who was interviewed on it. Podchaser is our industry's version of that. It's at podchaser.com. If you're not familiar with it, do check it out. Your podcast is probably already there, but you're going to want to claim it. If you've done any guesting on podcasts, you're going to want to make sure that your creator profile shows that you have been a guest on those podcasts. Because they deal with podcasters, they got on Twitter and they asked this, what turns you off from a podcast? I think this is really important. We talk about what turns people on to a podcast. We try to attract people to our podcast, but we might be doing some things on the podcast that we attract people to that instantly repel them. Again, this is part two of a multi-part series. Part one, if you go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe, you can check that out. James Ippolidi says this. He says, I can't stand when co-hosts ramble on and on thinking they are so funny, but it's mostly inside jokes. Let me take you back to how I started in radio. I started because I was in the music industry. I was a music marketing guy and we would promote music via radio. This is something that we ran into all the time. And I saw it from both ends because I've also been a radio jock. I'd bring bands in, I'd put bands on the radio. And they'd been on tour and they would come in probably pretty tired because these guys, a lot of times, independent guys are traveling in a van, maybe a small bus. And the upcoming guys are trying really hard to build an audience for themselves and also get radio airplay. So they do a lot of radio. They would come in. A lot of times it would be a college station. Maybe the jock isn't that experienced. It's very typical for these guys to immediately go into inside jokes and ha ha ha, man, remember last night, huh? Nobody else knew what they were talking about. A lot of times it's really young guys. You've got that juvenile humor coming from them. You've got a host that maybe, maybe a lot of the time doesn't know how to get them back on track. With podcasts, we are the host. And it can be easy when we get with our buddies to do a podcast. We haven't seen them all week. We haven't seen them for a couple of days or however often you do your podcast. We go into that. And that doesn't get edited out. 
And James Ippolitti, he's right on. He says, I can't stand when co-hosts ramble on and on thinking they're so funny, but it's mostly inside jokes. It's leaving the audience out of what you were doing. And this happens in a lot of ways. One of the ways that it happens is when you're recording audio and video. I just talked about Riverside.fm. They will do that, audio and video. And you've got to watch for this if you're recording audio and video where somebody talks about the background, something that they're seeing, or they'll hold something up and say, look at this, check this out. You see what I'm talking about? Mm, no, because you also release the podcast via audio. We've got no idea what you're talking about. It's the same kind of thing when you talk about an inside joke of something that just happened on the bus. You've got to bring people in. You've got to have an on-ramp, tell your joke, get off. If you want to be funny, you want to learn these skills, comedy classes, it's huge. Comics have to get on stage. They'll start out sometimes 90 seconds on stage, three minutes on stage because they got to move them. They got to turn and burn. I've never seen a club run as efficiently as comedy clubs. They're good at getting people on stage, getting people off stage. And because of that, you don't have a lot of time to work with. After that three minutes, they're going to get you off. You got to get good at telling your jokes. If you want to build this skill, I got a recommendation for you. Rick Roberts had a podcast for many years called School of Laughs. He's got a website at schooloflaughs.com. There are old episodes. There's training that he offers. He's a working comic. Last time I interviewed Rick, we talked about how many gigs he's doing per year, maybe 180. That's on a slow year. <laughs> Dude's been on the road for 30 years. He is out there churning and burning, still doing gig after gig after gig. So he knows about getting on stages with people who don't know him, getting off of those stages when the time is up. He can teach you those skills. That's going to help you as a podcast host. A lot of times nobody knows who you are. They're listening to you for the first time. You may be listening to this podcast for the first time. So got to get to the point. And with that said, I'm going to get to the next one. This is from Karen Cordaway. It was just a response to James. And she says this, I think this is my biggest pet peeve. Since I'm diving back into this, let me give you one more tip if you want to joke around with your co-host. It is important if you've got a co-host or as a host for your listeners to get to know you. If you've got all this inside stuff though, if you've got all this catch up, hey man, how you doing? Put it at the end. Make it a bonus episode. When you're promising content, especially if it's how-to, if you're a nonfiction podcast, if it's something like this podcast, how to grow your audience, how to be a better host, how to make a compelling podcast. You need to get to that content. Put the fun stuff at the back and you can talk about that. Hey, I want to get right to it. If you want to hear us catching up, we got it at the back because people do. People want to get to know you the more they listen to you. You talk about one thing, they think you got everything else together. You talk about one thing, they want to know who is this guy talking about this one thing. This is how we do with the people that we listen to. So don't think that people are not going to listen to you if you put it at the back. Let them know that it's at the back. Get to the point first. That's what's going to let you get the credibility with the audience and make them want to listen to that back end. Union and Metro podcast. Too many adverts, especially when they just bust in during a conversation. This is one of the issues that we see with dynamic ads. People will record their podcast and they think, oh, this is a good break, but it stops the flow of conversation. You may have noticed this. If you didn't, run it back to the very beginning of this episode when I talked about Riverside.fm. I smoothly went from a turnoff to how Riverside.fm will fix that turnoff. The ad was helpful. Even if you don't go to Riverside.fm and try it out, there's still something for you to think about, which is volume levels, keeping everything where you don't have to ride the volume in a car or ride the volume when you're in a noisy environment. You can do that regardless of whether you take them up on their free offer to try that out. Now, as far as too many ads, yeah, man, that gets old. And it gets old because of what I just talked about as far as getting to the point. People find your podcast, they press play on your podcast, they take a chance on your podcast because you have said in the title or you have said in episode notes, how are they found you? Here's what you're going to get. When you throw a bunch of ads in there, one of two things is going to happen. First thing is a lot of people are going to skip those ads. If you have a front roll ad, meaning before you come in, you say this podcast is brought to you by two, three, four minutes of ads. If it's the same way every time, they're just going to set their podcast players to start at three, four, five minutes whenever you're starting your podcast. So they're completely skipping those. But let's say they don't do that. They're not paying attention. They're taking the call. They're doing whatever. You're in the background. You want something that people are going to pay attention to. And if you care about your advertisers, I would say stick to one, maybe two different ads during your podcast. But you say, wait a minute. I'm getting more money the more ads I have. Maybe. Maybe my CPM is $200. 
the average CPM, it just went up. And people are so excited about it. Well, the average CPM, it's 2426 now. Okay. <laughs> so who's making more money? The guy doing one ad delivering to a very specific audience and really working for that client or somebody who's stacking as many ads as possible into an episode and those listeners are either checking out or they're skipping. It's a long-term strategy to get to that kind of money. You've got to build a podcast and that's what this podcast is about. So congratulations, you're in the right place. You got to be consistent. You got to stick to the topic. You got to have relationships. People have to hear you and they have to trust you to know that after that first ad, you're going to get back to the content. Not like most podcasts, four, five, six ads sometimes. So it is a long-term strategy, but if you stick it out, you could get eight times the CPM. You could get more. That's an arbitrary number, but I'm here to say that you can get more than just $25 CPM. People think, oh, we're so lucky, $25 CPM. No, we're not. No, man, you're worth more if you're providing that client a good ad if you've got an audience who listens to the ad, and if you've got an audience where that ad is actually a match for them. Something to think about, regardless, Union and Metro is right. Too many adverts, that's going to be a turnoff. You do too many of those, you're going to lose your listener. Carly Putch, Pooch, Carly, forgive me if I'm messing up your name. She says this, she says, if an episode feels inauthentic or like somebody's just reading off their notes, this is the fix something I call the sausage factory formula. If you've listened to this podcast, you've heard me talk about it. Go to Anchor. And I know, Anchor, yeah, I know. I'm in on that. <laughs> I'm telling you this because it's the easiest way to set this up. And you're going to get the benefits of it regardless. This is not something you want people to listen to or even know about. You're going to go to Anchor. You're going to set up a podcast. Every day, you're going to get behind the mic. You are going to read. And by reading... It could be Amazon reviews. It could be Yelp reviews. I was reading Yelp reviews yesterday. A lot of times they're reading episode prep. You're going to do that every day and you're going to practice delivering that in a way that does not sound like you're reading it. You're going to have excitement. You're going to have inflection. It's going to come off natural. That's step number one. You're going to read. You're going to improvise. Meaning when you read something like Carly's comment, what I did just now, you're going to be able to talk about something without any kind of notes. And by the way, let me go back to schooloflaughs.com for a minute. You want improv training? Rick's got it over there. Schooloflaughs.com is where to get that. But that's the second thing, improvisation. The third thing, you want to be able to think on your feet. As a guest, if a host asks you a question, or as a host, if you ask a question, and maybe your guest is a little bit slow, needs a little help, either one of those situations, you need to be able to think on your feet, redirect, smooth things over, do something where the episode can go on, where it doesn't just uh, complete train wreck, dead air. That's the worst thing we can have. And granted, we can edit this stuff. You're editing your podcast. I've talked about how important that is here before. You're editing your podcast, not the end of the world, but you want to be able to do this as smoothly as possible. So you need to be able to practice that. Those three things again, read, improvise, and think on your feet. Go to anchor.fm, set yourself up on a podcast, and start doing those three things every day. The think on your feet part, by the way, how I do that, just a random question. If you look up table topics by Toastmasters, you will see a list of hundreds, even thousands of questions. Table topics is a Toastmasters thing, by the way. If you've ever been to a Toastmasters meeting, you're familiar with it. They give you a topic. They'll say something like, hey, talk about Whataburger versus McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's improv fail there. <laughs> talk about Whataburger versus McDonald's. They put you in front of a crowd. You need to speak about that topic from 60 seconds to 120 seconds. You're basically doing table topics every day with your Sausage Factory podcast. So you're reading, improvising, thinking on your feet. If you've got any questions, reach out to me, Twitter, bigpodcast.com, however you get a hold of me. Feel free to do it. I'd love to hear what you're doing with this. I talk about this subject all the time and I like to feature different ways that people are doing it. I read episode prep. I read book descriptions. I read book reviews. I read Yelp descriptions. I read Yelp reviews. Somebody just wrote me this week. She said, I'm reading Today in History. That's great. That works. One of the best things you can do if you're looking for something to read is think, what would I read on my normal podcast? What is going to get me better at the things that I read on my normal podcast? So consider that Sausage Factory formula. Reach out to me when you got it because I would love to talk more about what you're doing and share that with others. Here's a turnoff from the last comic shop. Most shows that exceed an hour in runtime, there's some exceptions, but most of the time, just get to the point. <laughs> this is the theme. Get to the point. Don't chat with your co-host in a way that goes on and on and on. Do those inside jokes and nobody knows what you're talking about. Get to the point. 
And these interviews that go for an hour, cut them up, man. Cut them up. That's what I'm doing with this series. I've got so many of these podcast turnoffs that I want to talk about and are great jumping off points for me to talk about other things that will help you to build a big podcast. I'm breaking it up. This is two. Am I going to keep going? Yeah, probably. There might be three and four. You want to make sure you get them, by the way, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. So I agree here. The last comic shop, most shows that exceed an hour in runtime, there's some exceptions, but most of the time just get to the point. I'm going to wrap this up with this. i got a couple of them. Horrifying History says this, too much chit chat that has nothing to do with the episode itself. <laughs> We've talked about this, but here's what the former grilled cheese bus of Portland says. Introducing everyone on the pod and everyone saying hi. It's the same four people every episode. Just get into it. Yeah, this is true. And the combination of what was mentioned earlier about the host having chit chat that's even worse when you've got four people. I'm going to go around the table, introduce the co-host. Johnny, what's going on? How you doing? Did you have a good week? Okay, great. Great. Okay. How's the wife? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, kids have a report card. All right, Billy. Hey, Billy. How you doing, man? Hadn't seen you for Oh, man. I think you skipped last one. Dude, what have you been up to? It's been two weeks. It gets worse. It expands on itself. If it's the same four people, you can introduce everybody. Hey, it's the New Testament podcast. We're back. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're talking about the New Testament. And in this episode, specifically, this scripture. Read your scripture, get into it, give people what they want. And if you want to chit-chat, do something I call the post-show show. On the next episode, I'm going to talk about the post-show show. It's something you can do to easily better connect with listeners and also attract new listeners. It's a fun way to do things. It does attract new people because people listen to podcasts by hosts that they like. And this is a way to wrap it up in a nice bow. If you want more from me, bigpodcast.com is the site. And I've mentioned the subscription page. That's where you want to go to get more of this. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Subscribe to the podcast. I've got an iPhone button, Android button, RSS button, and a QR code. If you go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe, hold your phone up to the QR code. It takes my podcast straight to your phone. You can listen to me anywhere. You can listen to me in your car, and I promise you, you're not going to have to ride that volume because my levels are consistent, baby. Build a Big Podcast is made for the car. It's made for you to go wherever you want to go. So go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Do subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.